Hello and welcome to the online version of the worship service of the Central Presbyterian Church here in Fort Smith, Arkansas. I'm glad you tuned in this morning. Uh, this is a warm and welcoming, affirming, inclusive congregation. And uh, when we meet again in person, 
we would love to have you join us. But in the meantime, this is how we'll worship today. This worship service will include the Lord's Supper, and we invite you to join us and celebrate that together wherever you are. So if you're able to get some bread or a roll and some wine or some juice, then please do and prepare to join us. And my prayer of consecration will also be for the elements that you've provided at your place too. Uh, this is a time where not only you can celebrate the Lord's Supper by this means, but also if you are in the uh, River Valley or someplace close, we do have drive-through communion between 11 o'clock and 12. So it's on the lecta side. And if you drive in, we will be safe. We'll be gloved and masked and uh, we will hand the elements to you in a prepackaged container with a reach extender through the window of your car. So we will be as safe as we possibly can be, and we invite you to join us. And if you can come that way, then if you can bring a bag of uh, canned food for the food needs of people in our community, then bring them, just open your door when you get there and set them on the uh, ground, and we will get them when it's safe distance enough to do so. There's another way we can get together in these days of isolation, and that is by our Wine Down Wednesday. So at five o'clock on Wednesday, if you can, uh, Zoom meet with us together, and it's just a good time, no agenda, no lesson, no, nothing formal, just a time to have conversation, check in with each other, and see how we're doing. And so you'll get, you've gotten an invitation if you're on our email list. If you want an invitation, then just contact the church and we'll make sure you get one. Well, in order to receive as much as we need to receive from this service, let's set our intention for this service, asking ourselves, why did I tune in? What do I need right now from this time? So let's set our intention. And in order to receive everything that's going to be offered, we need to be centered. So let us take a moment in silence. Let us just begin with a deep breath, softening our gaze, and then bringing our attention to our normal breathing will become centered in silence. Amen. Please join me wherever you are in the call to worship. Let us reverence life with our eyes, ears, and fingertips. Let us love the world through heart and mind and body. We feed our eyes upon the mystery in the faces of our sisters and brothers and sisters of mothers and fathers and children everywhere. Let us be open to our full and emerging humanity. We gather not in bowing down, not with closed eyes and stooped ears, but with one opening of all windows of our beings, with the full outstretching of our spirits. Let us gather in meditation and singing, and those who have fallen in love with life. Let us pray. God of life, God of hope, God of all, lift us on your love like eagles' wings. Sustain us, guide us, heal us. Then send us forth into the world when it is safe, that we may love as you love. Amen.
Tragedy is being part of systems that we did not choose and cannot instantly change that hurt people. We are caught up in many such systems. So let us confess what we wish to change for the sake of our neighbors who are suffering. O oh God of justice, we lament for the systematic discrimination that has been going on against people of color in our country from the beginning. We acknowledge that there has been brutality and intimidation in far too many places for far too long. There has been unequal application of the law, unequal sentencing, and abuses throughout our criminal justice system. On behalf of our country, we confess, we cry out for change, and we offer ourselves in your service. Lord have mercy. Let us take a moment in silent prayer so that we can confess our sins to God. Hear the good news. The God of hope has a history of using people like us as agents of change. The spirit who indwells us empowers us to work for justice in the name of the God of love. Be courageous and be at peace. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds, God of hope, to hear a fresh word to inspire us to have the hope we need to have in order to keep working for the kind of world we want the kind of world you want, the kind of world that all people of goodwill want. Amen. Our reading from the First Testament, the Hebrew Bible, is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 11 through 14. Let us listen for God's word to us. Surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then will you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile.
Our New Testament reading today comes to us from the book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Let us listen for the word of God. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom we have gained access by faith into the grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has promised, has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. May God bless the reading of this, his holy word. Our scripture today could go in many different directions, but I think the overall thrust of this particular uh, Romans chapter leans heavily on hope. Paul was speaking to the Christians in the Roman Empire. Power. Christians lived in the heart of Roman dominance and darkness. And hope was probably in great short supply during this time because Christians, the Romans, were hostile toward Christians. And Christians were often thrown on the floor of the Colosseum amongst hungry lions to be devoured for the masses. Even Caesar was considered a god. They had on their coins, Deus et Dominus, which means God and Lord in a picture of Caesar. Paul himself was said to have had his head severed from his body during this time. And Peter was crucified. Uh, so you can see how hope, if you were a Christian, is in short supply. Now let us fast forward to 2020. You might can draw the same conclusions today of hope being in short supply with COVID-19 running, running rapid throughout the world. And in the United States, 40 million people have lost their jobs. And money is a problem because people can't pay their mortgages or buy food. And all this while a policeman in Minneapolis killed a black man, and this has caused racial unrest throughout the land. And all of this, while one of the greatest threats to our very existence is global warming, and it is going unnoticed at this time because of everything else that is happening in the world. So you can see how hope, even today, may be in short supply. There was this movie made back in 1994 called Shawshank Redemption. It was a novel, it was based on a novel by Stephen King. It won seven Oscar awards and was acclaimed as one of the most religious movies of its time. And I didn't remember it that way, so I had to go back and watch it again. But indeed, it had a lot of religious connotation in it, friendship, kinship, but more importantly, it spoke of hope. Just to give you an overall summary of this movie in case you want to go back and watch it again, it starred Tim Rogers, Tim Robbins, portrayed by Andy Dufresne. Now, Andy Dufresne was in prison on two life sentences for a crime he did not commit for the murder of his wife and her lover. And Red Redding, played by Morgan Freeman, who was a man in prison for a crime he didn't, he did commit. Now Andy and Morgan became fast friends. Morgan Freeman, or Red Redding, in the movie, was the guy who could get everything. He had connections to the outside world, so anything you needed, Red could get it for you. So Andy approached him one day and says, can you get me a rock hammer? And a large poster 
of Rita Hayward. And Morgan was kind of perplexed at why he wanted these things, but he went ahead and got them for him anyway. And soon, unbeknown to everybody else in the whole prison, even Red, Andy but took that little rock hammer and started scratching at the wall in his jail cell every night. And it took him 20 years to bore through that wall, but he eventually got through to the other side, which led him to a sewer pipe, which led under the outside walls into freedom. Andy also requested a five foot rope and Morgan thought that he was going to hang himself, that Andy had given up all hope, but only to find out the next day he had used that rope to tie around his leg and wrap it around a plastic bag which carried clothing so he could change into after he crawled through 500 yards of a sewer line. You see, Andy never gave up hope, and this gave Morgan hope that someday he may too be paroled. Now, I won't tell you how the story ended because you may want to go back and review it again for yourself, but it is a story about hope and kinship and friendship. Lewis Smedes, in his book, Standing on the Promises, once said that our souls need hope the way our lungs need oxygen. If hope is what keeps us going, then worry is what makes us cautious. If hope helps us to strive forward, then worry makes us slouch, even as we duck our heads in fear. But I especially like that passage that hope, our souls need hope the way our lungs need oxygen. A week ago, I was scanning with my clicker through the channels on TV, and I came across that show, America's Got Talent. You may be familiar with this show. It's where there's a celebrity group of judges and people all over the nation come before these judges showing their talent, hoping to, hoping to make it to the very end and win the prize. But on this particular show, it was Archie Williams, an older black man, and Simon Cowell asked Archie, who are you and why are you here? As you could see the tears welling up in Archie's eyes, he finally got control of himself and said, I've been in prison for 37 years for a crime of rape of a white woman that I did not commit. And everybody gasped. And Simon asked him, well, how in the world did you go 37 years without uh, any hope? And he said, uh, freedom is of the mind and I never let my mind go to prison. Archie was eventually freed because of the Innocence Project who worked for years to obtain his freedom. And then Archie went into the song by Elton John, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. And everybody stood in applause after he sang that song because Archie never let the sun go down on his hope. A week ago, I saw Nora, Ado Nora, Nora O'Donnell on CBS News interviewing a black historian. His name was Lonnie Bunch. And she asked him what he thought about everything that was going on in the world today, especially in lieu of the murder of George Floyd. And he said, as a black man, I'm lucky to be breathing. As a black man in America, I'm lucky to be alive. Like Archie Williams, Lonnie Bunch never let the sun go down on his hope. And he went on to be a famous historian and founder of the Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. Now we must not let hope be confused with fantasy or wishful thinking. 
I mean, wishful thinking may be we're all going to live 90 years and beyond with no senility, Alzheimer's, or dementia. And that we're going to marry the spouse of our choice and have kids that are all beautiful and make straight A's and earn scholarships to the best schools in the land. That is wishful thinking. Or that we have a job that we can't wait to get to after we wake up in the morning. Or that there's going to be always peace in the land and no war. That's not hope. That's fantasy or wishful thinking. It reminds me of the song I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. But we just can't have a Coca-Cola and get hope above wishful thinking or fantasy. Paul reminds us in the scripture today that we should boast in our hope, but we should also boast in our suffering because suffering goes hand in hand and side by side with hope because suffering creates endurance, endurance, character, and out of character comes hope. Just like a sword that needs to be tempered by the fires to become strong, so we must be tempered in our suffering so that we can gain character and hope. Many in this congregation follow Richard Rohr, Rohr who is a uh, Franciscan monk, and he has daily meditations that he puts out, and I subscribe to that. In one of his, just recently, he said that Jesus was not a man for others. He was one with them. He also went on to say that if you're feeling alone, know that God is indwelled by his eternal presence. If you're feeling unlovable, know that you are infinitely loved. If you think you don't have enough, know that I have everything that I need. If you're feeling stupid, know that you have the mind of Christ. And if you're feeling worthless, Know that you are precious in God's eyes and honored and God loves you. And this gives me hope. One of my favorite passages in the New Testament also comes from Romans. It's Romans 8, 38. And it goes something like this. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, nor height nor depth, Nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that gives me hope. There is this painting by G.F. Watts. This painting depicts a woman sitting on top of the world and she is grasping very tightly this crude harp. And on this harp it only has one string left. And this woman's ear is up to that string and she is plucking, appears to be plucking that one string as to be creating a beautiful symphony. If God has given you but one string, keep on playing for we need to hear the music that God has given you to play for us all. Hope is a good thing and a good thing never dies. Amen. So let us affirm our faith that gives us hope, and we will do that in the words of the Iona community of Scotland. So let us say what we believe. We believe that God is present in the darkness before the dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms, and the sun rises over barbed wire. We believe in a with us God who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. We affirm a faith that takes us beyond the safe place into action, into vulnerability, and in the streets. We commit ourselves to work for change 
and put ourselves on the line to bear responsibility, take risks, live powerfully, and face humiliation, to stand with those on the edge, to choose to live and to be used by the Spirit for God's new community of hope. Amen. Let us come to God in prayer for the needs of the world and the church and people in particular need. And so to be centered for this prayer time, let's again just take a deep breath and a short moment of silence. O oh God, who is the source of our life and the source of our being, we give you thanks just to be alive in this moment, in this historic year of 2020 with everything going on around us. And we are here and we are witnesses to it. And we have enough health today to be here physically, tune into this service online. And we're thankful for the technology that enables us to do that, the way we can keep in contact with people whom we love, even who we have not been able to be with for a long time now. But we are still blessed, and there is uh, so few cases of the virus in our immediate community for which we are very thankful. So, O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we do lift up our hearts in prayer for so many people in need right now, 
around the world as this virus has done such damage both physically to people and to their economies, psychologically, and there are people in all kinds of industries and communities that have been damaged and hurt by this. And so we pray for your grace and we think about the leaders whose decisions affect us all. We pray for all of them as they uh, decide what to do about reopening and distancing and the advice that they give. So we lift up our president and everybody who advises him for all the members of Congress and for our governor, everybody in the state who, whose actions and decisions affect so many lives. Give them wisdom, we pray, O Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up our hearts in prayer for our nation for another reason as well, and that is because we are such a deeply divided country and there is such racial injustice that has continued unbelievably for so many years despite so many efforts and so many well-meaning people, but yet we know that there are uh, endemic racist institutions in our country. And so we pray for good solutions and we pray for wisdom. We need to find better ways, oh God. And we need for all of the people of this country, regardless of their color, regardless of their sexual orientation, regardless of their religion, to be treated equally and fairly before the law and welcomed in our community. So we pray, O oh God, have mercy on our country. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up our hearts in prayer for the church around the world, and so many churches are so deeply affected by not being able to be together. And now, in these days, our General Assembly will have to be held remotely and electronically, and so we lift up our Presbyterian Church to you and ask us you to guide us in these uh, days of uncharted waters. May the meeting do all that it needs to do, and may we make the decisions we need to make, and may our, our leaders respond well. And may you help us even to develop new ways of ministering to our people in these, uh, these new and different days. So we lift up our prayers for the church and for this congregation. Make us fruitful and give us wisdom as we decide what to do about meeting together in the future. Bless our leaders, our new deacons and our new elders who have not yet been uh, consecrated in a physical service because we can't do that yet. But bless them as they resume their, as they assume their ministries to your people. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we lift up our hearts in prayer for other ministries in the area, for the First Presbyterian Church in Fort Smith and all that they do for our community, for the Presbyterian Children's Home of the Highlands in Virginia. And we lift up our hearts in prayer for people in special need, for David Witt, for Elizabeth Robbins, for Pastor Forte, for pa Tom Haynes and his mother, and our continued prayers for Pat Kent. And we lift up to you Kay Olson and Betty Jo Weary, Peggy Sabs and Mary Ann Lyon, Jane and Daryl Baker and Gloria Miles, May Barlow and Barbara Clark, Sharon Hayden and uh, Marilyn Rausch and Barry Law. And now we take just a moment in silence to lift up those who uh, we haven't named aloud, but who you know need your special touch. Hear us as we pray. O oh Lord, these and all of our prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Even though we cannot meet together physically, we know that we are a family, and it is important to keep supporting the family until we meet up again. So let us remember to be faithful with our stewardship. As we come to the Lord's Supper, I invite you to take the elements that you have prepared, the bread and the cup, and let us celebrate together. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying burdens. So this table is for all of us. So let us come with, with thanksgiving. May the God of faithfulness be with you. Let us open our hearts to God in this moment. We offer our hearts to the one who is always for us. People of God, lift your voices in songs of praise. We will make a joyful noise to the one who is our life. Before time began, your faithfulness was ever present, O God of grace. 
and your never-ending love poured out beauty and goodness, transforming chaos into beauty and order. All of this, the earth, the rivers, the wonders, were for those you formed in your image. But when we could go anywhere, we chose the ways of ego and violence. You called women and men as prophets, sending them out with only your hopes in hand, but we turned away from them. Then Jesus came to teach us a new and living way, a way that leads to hope. With those who make a joyful noise and with those who only rumble the notes, we sing glad songs of praise to you. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of steadfast love. Not only we, but all creation sings of your faithfulness. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes to everyone, everywhere. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus came, not with judgment on his lips, but proclaiming your grace. He came, not to knock us down, but to lift us when we stumble. He came, not to watch us die, but to stand at the emptiness of death, pointing and proclaiming, we have nothing to fear because of your steadfast love, which became our resurrection hope. As we would seek to see others through his compassionate eyes, as we would go to serve his people, we would speak of that mystery we call faith. Christ suffered so we might endure. Christ died, showing us the character of grace. Christ was raised, resurrection bringing us hope. At this time, ever faithful God, pour out your spirit upon the gifts of this bread and this cup and on all your children, wherever they are. May the bread of broken life strengthen us so that we may go where there is need and feed whoever is hungry. Cleanse the world of fear and worry. As we drink from the cup of grace, may we be nourished to offer access to grace to everyone, to bring healing to the lonely, to mourn with those who grieve. Then beyond the end of time, gather us with sisters and brothers from all places around your feast of faithfulness as we sing of your steadfast love forever. O God in community, holy in one. Amen. On the night before he met with death, Jesus came to the table with those he loved. And he took bread and he gave thanks to the God of all creation. And he broke the bread and shared it among his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this remembering me. And when the supper had ended, he took a cup of wine And he gave thanks to the God of all creation. And he shared the cup among his disciples, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. So these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us receive them with joy. So I invite you now to take the bread that you've prepared. And remember, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And take the cup that you have prepared and remember. This is the cup of salvation. Would you pray with me? Created and called to be faithful stewards, we are sent forth by our God. We will take all that is good to places of brokenness, all that is beautiful to those who live in despair. Called and commissioned to be faithful disciples, we are sent by Jesus, word of hope. We follow Jesus to every place he would lead us, to every person who will bless us. Called and filled with the very breath of peace, we are sent by the Spirit, God's grace. We will join in the Spirit in bringing life where there is fear, offering love where hate seeks to take hold. Amen.
wherever you are going, even if it's only to another room in your house, God is sending you there. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose for you being there. Christ, who indwells you, has something he wants to do through you, wherever you are. So believe that and receive his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.